Music lovers, you have 117 days until Denver's first ever Grand Doozy Music Festival takes over what's well, been a relatively quiet park in southwest <laughs> Denver, but it didn't come without a battle from neighbors. Well, tonight, Denver 7's Jennifer Kovaleski has this 360 doozy from the politics to the economics to the impact on Denver's music scene. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We answer the call of Colorado. Answering the call. This is Denver. With a doozy of all doozies, a grand doozy, a three day music festival. Put on by Superfly, one of the most well known music promoters in the world, with a diverse lineup that lives up to its name. Over the course of three days, 120,000 people will fill Denver's Overland Golf Course. September 14th through 16th. We've always been inspired to do something here. What the founders see is a chance to create something iconic. Neighbors see as a nightmare. Music lovers can't wait. While the city sees a cash cow. <laughs> putting Denver's already rich music scene even more on the map. Four very different perspectives. So let's dive into this 360 breakdown. And showcase kind of the, the, the best and all the, the cool stuff that Denver has to offer. Starting with Superfly co-founder Rick Farman from the Big Apple, they see Denver's already vibrant music scene as ripe for a concert of this size, which is another way of saying there's money to be made. It's an iconic event for Denver. It took many, many years to get here and a lengthy public process. But Fairman says they're committed to doing it right. We want to leave the course, you know, better than we found it. But like anything this big, there's a flip side. We've been here close to 40 years. Meet Ivana Kindle, a lover of flowers and protecting her neighborhood less than a block from the course where it will be held. I'd rather not have that many people here. I'd rather not have that much noise here. Her view is simple. Not in my backyard. A view I think we can all understand. Add in all the traffic on her street and on foot sober or otherwise. She doesn't want people trampling on her flowers. We're getting it anyway, so, <laughs> so we'll deal with it. This is a map of the neighborhood. The homes in green are against the festival. Those in pink support it. We want to be a great partner, and that goes with spending a lot of time on the ground. The founders get the pushback, and so does Richard Scharf with Visit Denver. We addressed a lot of the tough issues. His 360 view. This is an opportunity to get Denver's brand as a music mecca out there. And the perception that Denver has uh, a great music tradition here. While bringing new faces to the city. They'll spend their money that they made somewhere else. And of course, visitors pay taxes, and those are taxes that we as residents don't have to pay. Red Rocks being as iconic as it is, they also hope they can grow Colorado's outdoor music scene and they see a music festival as a long time coming. I think it's been a missing link, quite honestly. Finally putting Denver on the same list as other great cities, like San Fran and Chicago. Pretty much all major cities have a big music festival. And people are excited. Tuesday's lineup announcement got thousands of likes and shares on Facebook, with comments like, this looks amazing, and we need to see Kendrick. Now let's bring it back to the economic benefits. Early estimates show the festival will make the golf course and the city a couple million in one weekend. Enough to make significant improvements at Overland, like new permanent restrooms. There are dollars coming directly to this community. Politically, Denver City Councilman Jolyn Clark sees it as a huge upside. He voted in favor of the festival. They will be able to use to leverage um, on the, the things that they know they need. Whether you like it or not, the grand doozy is coming. And the real test comes once it gets here. We just want everybody to come and celebrate Denver and the amazing community that it is. And look, Overland is an amazing place. In Denver, Jennifer Kowalewski, Denver 7. Are you going? Are you mad they're coming? Any and all thoughts you have on this, let us know. We'll read them all, I promise. 360 at thedenverchannel.com or you can message us on Facebook or Twitter.